So, do you ever feel like you could upgrade the looks of your architecture site analysis? Well, in this video, we're going to learn some great Photoshop and Illustrator techniques to do so. Check it out! What's up guys? Ographics in here. My name is Oliver and welcome back to another video. This week, I would like to thank Squarespace for supporting the channel and helping me create a new O-Graphics website. A place where I'll gather all the content, courses and packs. Squarespace is a very easy to use, all in one platform to build your own website or portfolio. More on that later in the video, so stay tuned. Alright, so today's video is inspired by a site analysis image that Alex Hography did in his architecture visualization website. I'm going to link him in the video description, he has a next level blog that teaches a lot about this topic. I've learned a lot from him, and if you don't know the blog yet, you should definitely check it out. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, I post weekly videos all about architecture representation and visualization. If you've got any questions, please drop them down below. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Enjoy! Usually, you will have the site base in some sort of CAD or BIM software. The first thing you gotta do is export a PDF from this software, then import it into Adobe Illustrator. Here, I like to organize the elements into separate layers because we're going to work simultaneously with Illustrator and Photoshop. Over this face, adjust the line weights if they aren't correct, and you can add or remove any elements as well, or totally skip this part. It's up to you. But this is the workflow I prefer using. I find this Illustrator step important because the line weights that you often use in your CAD or BIM software are made to print. Sometimes with your digital drawings you might want to change it a little bit, and for me, Illustrator is much more visual to do so. Also, on top of that, you won't mess up your original file. So basically what I did here was I've hidden the terrain and the site for now. Then save it as a .ai file. This first step is supposed to be quick and you shouldn't take long here. Then once you're finished, let's jump into Photoshop. Here in Photoshop, create a new document. I'm going to use the same size as we are using in Illustrator. Then go to File. Place linked and choose that AI file that we just saved. Here, under this Crop 2 option, choose Media Box. This Illustrator layer will serve us as a base layer, a guide to our selections. So, using the magic wand shortcut W, we're going to select areas and paint in each layer. You could go all the way in Illustrator but I opted to use a very soft shadow and Photoshop deals much better with these kinds of results. Alright, so in my opinion, the best workflow for this specific step that we're going to do now is to use the selection to create a mask and paint the whole layer with the color. That way it's much easier to fill in or remove parts if needed. For the background, I'm going to use a paper texture from the texture pack that we have over our Gumroad page. It will be a subtle effect. I'm reducing the opacity to something like 10%. And on top of that, placing a layer with the blend mode color so we can have a light beige color. We're going to create one layer for each of the elements, as I said. Make sure to change the blend mode of these layers to multiply so it shows the paper texture that is behind. The whole process of painting these layers is very straightforward, I won't bore you with it. We are repeating the same thing we did with the road I showed you. Select using the base layer and on a new layer create a mask with this selection and fully paint this layer with the color. With the vegetation mask, I'm also going to the layers blending options and adding a pattern overlay. That way, it gives a different look from the rest, so we understand that it's not just a ground delimitation, but a volume. I think it's more of an overall canvas and color composition. However, 
this next step will require you a bit more attention, so take a closer look here. We're going to do the shadows, specifically from the entourage houses. Using the polygonal lasso tool, we're going to create these shadows in a 45 degree angle. As you might have seen, the north is pointing up in this drawing. And as I live in Brazil, I'm going to create the shadows based on how the sun hits here in the south hemisphere. Okay, so hold shift so it will automatically lock your angle and go for the 45. In this case, I'm leaning towards the left. Create a selection where you paint and using a round soft brush with black as the color, paint darker near the house and make the shadow fade the further it goes. Ctrl D to deselect, then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and do this effect a couple of times till you're happy with the result. You can choose the first option in the filter to redo the last effect. Then finally, with the help of the baseline layer, hide the inside of the house using a mask. And you can lower the layer's opacity once you're done. Since this step is a bit more difficult, I'm going to show you one more time. Regardless of how the building is oriented, you have to follow the same angle you set for your file. In this case, 45. It might be a little tricky at first, but you will eventually get the hang of it. Repeat the steps exactly how we did the first one, and once you're about to apply the blur effect, there's a catch here. Since we're doing it all in a single layer, you have to make a selection around the area you're currently working. Or you can leave to do the blur at the end, totally up to you, but just don't forget about this, or you'll be applying multiple blurs to the first ones and they will look very different from each other. Now that you got how it's done, let me fast forward this one. Quick note, in Alexography's drawing, use a top view clay render to do the shadows, but I wanted to give you guys an option to do it using only Photoshop. The, this final image will look like it was a top view of a physical model, so we're aiming for a kind of a realistic result here. See, commonly shadows aren't 100% black, like full black, they often have a tint in the real world. And to color it, let's do the following. Create a new layer and clip it to the shadow layer, using the shortcut Ctrl Alt G. Then fully paint this layer with a dark brown. I usually use the eyedropper to pick a color from the current image and then darken it a little bit. Great, it looks good. Next, using another layered clip below, but this time to the railway, let's add a shadow to this shape. I'm using a round soft brush with a dark red to simulate a retaining wall and a bridge that actually exists. I'm trying to represent what's actually there so that the railway is lower than the rest. The key here is to create multiple levels of shadow intensity. Just like the houses, make it darker near the edges and fade it away. Awesome, we're seeing some progress here. Don't forget that you can always fine tune colors using the shortcut Ctrl U to access the hue and saturation adjustment. I was going to do the site boundaries directly in Photoshop, but midway through I decided not to. So since we're working with a linked file, we just gotta go back to Illustrator, activate back the layer, you can also constantly tweak some of these settings till you're happy with the result, and then finally save it, and you will see it update in your Photoshop file. You can use a mask over the base layer to only show certain areas. In this case, I'm going to leave hidden everything but the site and the train track. Now I felt that the composition lacked a bit of contrast, so I painted the buildings with a very dark grey and added a splatter texture that is going to be in the texture pack volume 2 on top and clipped to give a bit more details. The splatter texture is on multiply layer mode. Finally, it was time for the texts. Now in this step, there isn't much to say. It's all very straightforward. 
I'm using the main font I use for the channel, which is the Open Sans. Then I lowered the text opacity to 50% or so. Take your time to do this step. It will be the final touch of your image. It will bring all the loose elements in your canvas together. Play with different sizes, bold or not. Give some hierarchy to it. Now is also the time to place all the data specific to your site. Access, barriers, wind, boundaries, you know, all that good stuff. For this one, I opted for a minimal look. There's only one data that I don't like to input in this type of drawing, which is that classic send path. For me, the North Star already tells that information much more direct. Sometimes I like to create a colored line only to indicate which type of sun is hitting each facade, volumetric wise of course. For example, morning and afternoon lights and so on. But that's just a personal preference, I guess. We're almost finishing up. We can now add a train over the tracks to give more points of interest in the image. While I add this train, let me quickly talk about something. Well, you saw at the beginning I talked about fixing line weights and prepping the illustrator base. But at the end, I didn't end up using it. That's a really common workflow for me. When I'm starting a new illustration, I usually gather some references and I know more or less where I want to go in terms of visuals. But there are a lot of decisions that are taken during the process. And I really like to be able to take these decisions midway through, regardless of how I began. Therefore, I think the best advice I can give you is to have all these base files and support files like baselines, render elements and so on, at the beginning, even if you're not sure you're going to use it. Because later, they will be at your hand to help you achieve the best result possible and you won't have to redo work if somehow you needed something that aren't there. I hope I didn't confuse you and, and you got what I was talking about. Alright, now a cool way to insert some data into your image is to use icons, like I used in the last video. For this example, I used in a bus stop but be creative about it. Now, finally, our last move. Go to your Illustrator file and copy the topography lines we have hidden and paste it in Photoshop. Or if you're just using one software, create a PDF containing only this element. So place it above everything, choose a very thin line and even reduce the opacity if you feel like it. Awesome, that is it guys. I'm really happy with the result. I hope you learned something today. And once again, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Now, if you're an architect that needs an online presence or a portfolio to show your clients, I really encourage you guys to try it out. The platform has tons of minimalist ready to use templates. It's very intuitive and customizable. And you can achieve great results in no time and with no previous knowledge in website designing. I have built a solid base for my website and future content is coming out soon. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash ographics to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching and as I said, I'm going to link the Visualizing Architecture blog in the video description from Alex. You should definitely check it out if you don't know him yet. He has been a reference of mine for a long time. And today's video was inspired on one of his site analyses, as I said in the beginning. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you learned something, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me at old.graphics on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!